Good evening, everyone. This is Prophetess Angela Richardson. I'm going to do a teaching on today. Before, But before I get started, I'm going to invite a couple of people to come on to the live today. And today we're going to talk about what God has asked me to ask y'all a question on today. About what do you have in your hand? What are you sitting on that you should be using at this time? So, I'm going to go ahead and get... Do a word of prayer. I invited a couple people. Like you know how I do it. I go ahead and get the teaching. It doesn't matter if anyone is on here or not. But I'm going to um, go ahead and do it. give a word of prayer. Then I'm going to go ahead and get started into the lesson. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, that we come to the throne of mercy and grace. Lord, we pray right now that for everybody that comes on the live or everybody that comes on the replay, that they will receive the word of the Lord that is coming forth out of your vessel right now in Jesus' name. Lord, that they're asking them what are, what do they have in their hand at, at this moment right now that they can use to be to, to, to use to build up your kingdom and to, they can use it to as a new stream of income to, to be a blessing to their family. In their lives in Jesus name and Lord I pray right now that you move mighty on this live on today Lord just continue to have your way in Jesus name we pray amen so uh, like I said the subject that we're going to teach about today is uh, I was doing something yesterday and I was um, meditating on some things and that this come up in my spirit and I because I was asking the Lord I said what what am I going to teach about t um, tomorrow which is today on, on my live and he asked me and I heard him say what do you have in your hand I was like what what do I have in my hand I said oh, okay so you know um so he gave me the scriptures so I'm gonna go ahead and get started in the lesson so my, like I said my subject is what do you have in your hand you know when we all got something there's a gift in us that God has given us there's a talent in us that God has given us but um, basically what he's asking with the gifts and talents that he has given you, what are you doing with it? You know, are you sitting on it or are you stepping out in faith and believing him that when he tell you to move, that you go ahead and move and do what he's telling you to do. So it's going to it's going to be it's a personal thing. You know, the, um, this lesson is personal, you know, for everybody, you because nobody knows, you know, sometimes we know each other's gifts and sometimes we don't. Sometimes, you know, God give us. Uh, the information sometimes we prophesy in part and we know in part. We, God don't give it to us all the time. But you, uh, th you can, you know personally what God, what gift God has given in you. So you know personally if you're sitting on it and not using it, you you know that for yourself. You know, you know. So I I can't tell you, you know, uh, that you're using it. The can, can tell. Well, yes, I can. If I don't see you doing it, you know, I know you ain't using it. But anyway, but. Um, this this lesson is just so um, something that we can um, think to ourselves. You know, it's a personal thing you know, for this lesson on today. And um, so um, it says in Exodus, the first scripture I'm going to use is Exodus 4 and 2. And it says, and the Lord said unto him, what is that in your hand? And a shepherd's staff replied Moses. So this is God talking to Moses. So this what, what I'm gonna give you the story about what this scripture means, okay? So Moses has went had went to Pharaoh and told Pharaoh to let his people go. So Pharaoh has some sorcerers, you know, people that do witchcraft and do all that stuff, crystal ball, all that stuff, you know, operating out of familiar spirit. But anyway, so what? Uh, so when um, the sorcerers threw down their staff, they they turn into snakes. So now Moses is like, well, Lord, what am I going to do? And so he heard the voice of the Lord, and the voice of the Lord said, throw down your staff. So he asked him, what do you have in hand? Moses said, our staff. He said, well, throw it down. So when he threw down his staff, it turned into a snake as well. But this his, the snake that, uh, that came out of um, uh, Moses' staff was way powerful than the other snake. So he, though his snake ate up all these other snakes. So that let you know God's power is stronger than any kind of witchcraft, any kind of voodoo, hoodoo, white magic, black magic, 
uh, uh, sangria. All, you know, God's God's power is stronger than that. Anyway, let me. I'm getting off, but let me get back to the lesson. So God was asking Moses, "What have you, What do you have in your hand?" He had the same thing that the sorcerers of, of of Pharaoh had was, which is a staff. So he told him, he said, "What do you have in hand?" He said, "I got a staff." He said, "Well, throw it down and use it." So he threw it down and it became a snake and it ate those other snakes up. So, you know, the power of God is going to win over all, no matter what. But said, God told Moses, what was it? Ask, ask Moses what was in his hand. Moses told God that he had a staff. God told him to throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake. And Moses' staff ate up the other snakes. So, you know, that I'm just so... It, it, I'm still asking you the same thing. What do you have in your hand? The same thing God asked, asked Moses. What do you have in your hand, Moses? Moses said, I have a staff. He said, well, throw it down. That means he had to move. Hey, Prophet is Amy, how you doing? That means he had to move. He had to use it, right? So if he wouldn't have took the action of throwing it down, guess what? You know what I'm saying? It could have been a different outcome. But by him moving and using what God had already given him, his snake ate up the, the when the staff turned into a snake, it ate up all these other snakes, you know, that the, um, so that let him then know that let Pharaoh know that God's power was stronger than his, his so-called power. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, said, so Moses had already what he needed in his hand, you know, and just like Moses, we do, we already have what we need in us. You know, but a lot of time we don't think what we have is uh, sufficient enough. Sometimes we don't think that because our gifts don't operate like somebody else's gift, that our, our, our gifts are insignificant. And that's not so in God because God has a purpose and a plan for all our lives. So what we have to do, you know, is quit comparing ourselves to other people because I don't flow like everybody else. I flow like God told me to flow. You know, I ain't trying to to look like nobody I ain't trying to be like nobody only person i'm trying to be like is me angela only person i know how to be like is me and is angela and who and be who god has made me to be and not try to be like somebody else but be who god has made me to be because he don't want everybody operating the light because I, the people that i that he has sent me to you might can't even reach them so I got to be who God has called me to be. But anyway, let me draw it back in to get back on, on my lesson. So he said, the next, next scripture I'm going to use is 2 Kings 4, 2 through 7. And this story talks about Elisha, about the, um, it was a woman of God. Uh, she, her husband had died. So uh, the creditors was going to come take her, her child, her two children uh, as pay for, the, uh, for what her, her husband owed. And so she went to the man of God. And she told the man of God what was going on. And I'm going to start reading right here in verse 2. It says, So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? Now he's asking her, What she have in the house? What do you have already in your hand? That's what he's asking her. So, What do you have in the house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. So she did have something in the house. Like you said, she had a jar of oil, but she thought it was insignificant. But, you know, I'm here to let you know anything God gives you is not insignificant. He's given it to you for a purpose and the purpose is for you to use it. And so and we're going to get on in, into it and we'll see that she used that one pot of oil to, you know, to be a blessing to her and her family. In verse three, he said, then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere. Go to all your neighbors and empty and borrow empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. So he told her to go go in your neighborhood, go in your in your uh sub, the subdivision or or wherever you live at. Go in your apartment complex and borrow all these vessels. You know, and he told he said now don't borrow just two or three. He said borrow a lot of them and get as many as you can. And you know if she wouldn't have been obedient and went and got one. Then it wasn't the, the the miracle wasn't going to be performed because she wasn't going to be able to pay nobody off. And you know, so it's it's a it's a um so it's so very important that we follow instructions. When a man or woman of God give us instruction, we got to follow it to the letter. We can't say I don't want to do that because that don't seem right, and I don't want to do this because that don't that don't seem right. Hey, Prophetess King Kendra, how you doing? So what we got to do, we got to follow instruction. Whatever the instruction the man or woman of God has given you or God has given you, follow those instructions to the letter because it makes a difference. So like I said, if she would have got two of the vessels, 
Came back and pulled the oil, then all, the oil would have stopped at two. But he said, get as many as you can and not get a fruit. So she went and got as many as she can. Her sons went and got as many as she can. They came back in. They showed them to the man of God. He told them to go in the house and close the door and start pouring the oil. So as he, they began to pour their oil, the oil didn't never run out into that last vessel until they got the last vessel. So when they got the last vessel and they pulled the oil and she asked the son, it was any more. He said, no, that was it. And guess what? The oil cut off. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's so very important that we follow all the instructions. No being out. It, it just, and it reminds me of Naaman. When uh, Naaman went to Elisha to be healed because he had leprosy and he told him, he come out the house and told him, he said, well, go, oh, go dip in the Jordan seven times, you know, uh, naming, uh, not naming, um, what was his name? Oh, uh, not naming. I can't think of his name now. Nah. Uh, but anyway, he got mad and, um, and told him he didn't want to go dip in the Jordan. And then one of his, um, servants told him, he said, you don't come all this way. And you, you mean to tell me you ain't going to do what the man of God is telling you to do. And so, and so he told him, he said, oh, so, so he went on ahead and started, he went out, out there in the Jordan and began to dip. So he did, I mean, the Jordan was muddy he, and he was, he was wanting to change the rules. He said, why do I have to dip in the old oh, muddy Jordan? It's old nasty water. Why can't I go in some, in my town where I'm coming from and go dip in some of that clean water? But the instruction wasn't to dip in the clean water. The instruction was to dip in that muddy water. So, you know, when, I, when God gives us the instruction, we can't change the instruction just because we don't want to do what he's telling us to do. We got to do it the way he tells us to do it. So when he did it, the way the man of God told him to do it, when he dipped and on that seventh time when he dipped and come back up, his, clean, his, his skin was clean, was that of a newborn babe. But think about it. If he wouldn't have followed over his short, he said, well, I ain't going to dip in that water. I'm going to go on bite with that word. And I'm going to go find me the cleanest river to dip in. And I'm going to dip in that water. And guess what? Nothing would have happened. He still been a, a leper. So it's so, hey, Prophet Gigi, how you doing? He would have still been a leper he, if he didn't have, wouldn't have followed the instruction. So it's so very important that we follow instruction to the letter. Don't add to it. Don't take away. You do what? What man or woman of God has told you, you do what God has told you. Because that's where your healing going to manifest. So when he dipped in the Jordan, it was muddy. So it was muddy and he was there. And, he, and, and back in those days, they considered um, people that had leprosy as unclean. So he un, he was an unclean person per se. And then he dipped, dipped in that, that dirty water. So next thing you know, from from dirty to dirty came clean. So, you know, it's, you know if he, it, it was it's so very important. That he followed those instructions. So when he followed those instructions and he dipped with that self and he couldn't go out there and dip two times and say he was healed. Well, I ain't going to dip no more. I don't want to dip but two times. Guess what? He still would have been a leper. So, you know, if you, you got to follow these instructions when the man or woman of God is given to you because it, it's not coming from the man or woman per se. He, he's, God is using them as a vessel, but it's coming from God himself. So you got to follow those instructions. And so he said, so he, they went and borrowed all these vessels and, and they got enough. And then they took them to the man of God and he looked at him. He said, well, okay, go sell the oil, go sell it. And then they went and sold the oil. And when they came back, they had enough to pay all the bills off. So now she ain't got to worry about the creditors coming and get her sons. And then she had money to live off of her. So that means, so it, and it came back to what did she have in her home? What did she have in her hand? What does she have that she could use that God was going to use to be a blessing to her and her children? You know what I'm saying? So it's just a personal question. What do you have in your hand? What gift God has given you or what talent God has given you that God has told you to use it? And it was going to be a blessing to you and your family. What, what, is, what is it? Only you know what it is. Said, um... But the man of God showed her that, uh, so she didn't, like I said, she didn't believe that she even had it, had enough. She, what well, she didn't believe, like she had nothing that was worthy. She thought that pot of oil wasn't nothing. Well, I ain't got nothing but old pot of oil. She didn't even think it was significant. But God showed her, oh yes, whatever you have is significant. And said, um, but the man of God showed her that 
that she did need, indeed have something in her home to be used to be a blessing to her and her family. And just like he showed her, you know, the man of God, uh, God showed her that she had something in her home. He's showing you as well. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure God is talking to you to, to you now and letting you know, oh, yeah, you got something significant that can be used to be a blessing to you and your home. Because many times God tells us to do certain things and we don't want to do it. Well, we we, we say we're going to do it, but then we don't never do it. And this now is we getting in finna go into another year of 2022. And, you know, maybe he told you something, do something in 2021 before 20. 2020 came out, went out and for do, for you to be doing it in 2021 and you still hadn't done it yet. But I mean, now is the time to get moving, move your feet and get moving because 20, the year 2022, we're going to have to be uh, being, start being obedient to what God is saying. You know, really we should have been obedient already, but you know, you know, I'm not here to beat anybody up, but I'm here to tell you the truth too, as well, that you need to get about, be about what God is telling you to do. If he has told you to open a business, then do so. He has told you to write a book. Then what, what, I mean, what is your excuses? You know, go ahead and write that book because he's, he's going to get, bless you with the finances to be able to publish it. And especially with the, um, what the way we, with Prophetess K, we know, you know, they, she have taught a class how to self publish. If you need it, know how to self publish, go back and find that video and look at it, take you some notes, you know what I'm saying? And go for it. You know what I'm saying? And then if you, uh, if you don't, you, you don't want to do self publish and you need somebody to, you need a, a publisher to do it, then go through her and she'll do it. She has a payment plan and where you don't have to end up paying it all at one time. You know, she's there to work with us and God has put her there to work with us. So, you know that I mean I'm I'm just being real. There's no more excuses now. People have excuses, but it ain't really no it ain't really none. You know, but we can come up with some. You know, but it ain't none. So my question for you today is, what do you have in your hand? What gift or what talent that you already do that is easy for you to do? You know, many many like you know me. I do the crafts and stuff, and um, God has told me to make it as a business. So it's easy for me when I see certain things. I say, oh, I can do that. That's easy. You know what I'm saying? But what thing God has showed you that when he showed you for you to do it, you say, oh, yeah, I, that's easy because I already doing it anyway. So if you already do it anyway, what is the hold up? I'm just asking. What is your hold up if you already doing it anyway? You might as well use it as a form of income in your home. If God has told you to use it as a business, then what is your hold up? What is stopping you from moving forward in, in that area? So what skill set do you have that could solve a problem for someone else? You know, and that's how businesses are. You know, when people see certain things that you make and they say, oh, I want that. I like that. I, I don't I don't have time to try to make the stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pay somebody else to make it. And then whatever your price is, they willing to pay it. They ain't going to argue. They ain't going to grumble about what you charging because they want it. And they willing to pay for that uh, that convenience. You know, but those that's complaining, grumbling and complaining about prices is, you know, they maybe they're not your customers. You know, you know, everybody's not our customers. If, if you know, if somebody always want to nickel and dime you, you know, and I always want to hook up, then if them, those are not your customers. You know, God's going to send you some customers that don't mind paying what you charge, you know, and you know, and whatever you're charging is not, it's not, it's not unreasonable. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's affordable. You know, it's not unreasonable. So. You know, what God, what, what thing has God gave you that you can be a blessing to someone else that you can solve problems? And just like with my husband, he has a car detailing shop and when they bring his, their cars to him, they're dirty on the outside, dirty on the inside. And guess what? He cleaned outside. He cleaned the inside. And guess what he doing? He's solving the problem. So they already know the prices because he got them listed as they drive up. So they already know what it's going to cost when they go in there. You know what I'm saying? So he's solving that problem. So what, what gift or what talent God has given you that you can solve a problem for someone else? God's going to say, is telling you that you can use it as a stream of income. Said so you can use it, it for a source of income in your home. What do you already have in your hand? I'm going to ask you that question several times. What do you already have in your hand? Say so God has given you a gift of some sort and he wants you to use it. It could be a money maker for you if you just walk out in faith. You know, you don't know, quit thinking about, well, ain't nobody going to buy it. Well, you don't know that. 
Have you put it out there for anybody to see it? You don't know what nobody gonna do. Quit, quit speaking for somebody else when you don't know what they thinking. Okay, stop talking yourself out of your blessings. You know, and quit allowing the enemy to put things in your head. Cause who, whoever put, cause the enemy is putting that in your head. That ain't God saying that. God saying you could do it, but then you listen to the enemy. What he saying? He said, I ain't nobody gonna buy it. He don't. That's a lie. When you put it out there, you'll be surprised at people buy it. And even if somebody you don't buy that, you know, you know what I'm saying? Maybe God will send some people yet you don't know that would be a blessing to you. So don't sit, don't talk yourself out of your blessing. Don't let nobody else talk you out of your blessing, what God is telling you to do. Don't let them talk you out of your blessing because God really wants to bless us. And if we'll walk out in faith and believe God at his word, and do what he's telling us to do. That we can be very successful in our businesses. And not only that. He wants us successful in our business. You know it's twofold. For us to be a blessing for our home. We can pay our bills off. We can we can live a life of debt free. Not only that. And once we do that. Now we're able to help other people. We're able to bless other people with our finances. And not only that. We're able to help build up the kingdom of God. So whatever ministry that you're in. That you, you have your own ministry maybe. Or you know. Or whatever other ministry you're in maybe you up on some leadership and if they ask any type of money you are you are it won't be no strain to you to give it because you have extra you have the overflow so that's why god wants us blessed because you know uh, I've, I've heard all my life you know uh that uh that god want his people pro poor that's a lie from the pit that's a lie God don't want his people poor because what can a poor person do you know what i'm saying a poor person can't can't even pay their bills. They can't help you. They can't help nobody. So God wants us blessed. He just wants us blessed to the point that the blessings don't have us. That we are able to give give to whoever need, in need, you know, and not always suspect anything back. That's what God wants from us. You know what I'm saying? But he does want us blessed. So don't let nobody tell you just because God is blessing you that, you know, uh, that you ain't saved or this and this and that. Long as that money don't have you and you got the money and you know when to release it, when God is telling you release it, you good. You know what I'm saying? As long as you don't, you don't act start acting bigger because you got money. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, uh, you don't want nobody. Now you got a new vehicle. You don't want nobody ride in your vehicle. Let them, or when they come in your house, let them take the shoes off. No, you come in my house, you wear what you got on. You know what I'm saying? I got some uh, rugs at the door. You hit your foot on them rugs, keep on coming in and you sit down. You know what I'm saying? I don't have, there's nothing in my home that's that, that precious to me. You know, said that I won't let nobody come in here. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's so very important that we, uh, you know, just um, do what God is asking you to do. He's trying. To, nah, he's, well, he's trying because with some people he's trying because they don't want to receive what he's wanting to give us. You know, you know, but uh, with other people that's willing and able and going to do what God say do, he's going to lavish on us. You know what I'm saying? So it's so very important. So. You know, we, we're we going to have to, you know, allow God to do what he want to do in us. And don't make nobody make you feel bad because he's blessing you. You know, uh-uh. You know, because if they would do what you're doing or they would be obedient to what God is telling them to do, they would be blessed as well. But it takes a mindset. You know, it's, you got to change your mind. You can't go. We can't be going in 2022 with that wrong mindset. That same old mindset that we had in 2020, 2021. We going to go in 2022 with a new mindset because God's going to do a new thing. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just change your mind about some things. A lot of things that I've learned over the years from different ministries and everything, it wasn't, all, it wasn't always true. So a lot of times it was man, what man was saying. You know, they never did go to the word of God and clarify themselves. And a lot of times when we take the word of, you know, not not doubting anybody that's coming through, that's preaching or teaching the word of God, but we got to be like the Bereans. The Bereans, what they did, they go back whenever Paul was teaching, they went back and studied. Study to make sure what he teaching was true so you know when we don't get in our word and don't get in our bibles and then we just accept everything that come across the pulpit and a lot of it wasn't true you know what i'm saying and you know so sometimes we got to renew our mind and, and unlearn the things that we have learned over the years so god can renew our minds with what it what 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 he's doing now is what i'm saying so 
Sometimes we got to learn to unlearn, you know, and, and, and I always pray and ask God, that God, if anything that I learned over the years that is not beneficial to me, help me forget it. And so I can keep moving on in you, you know, I don't want anything hindering me from my walk in God. So, you know, it said, um, he said, if he told you to do book, or maybe you, edit, you can edit, you're a good editor. Maybe you like, um. You know, you do, you can um, get on there and you can know where the period supposed to be. You know, where the comma supposed to be. You know, where the semicolon supposed to be. You know, when they said put, when they had and they put a, should have put a but there. You know, if you were, if that, you good in that English, if you're good in English, then you could edit, you could be an editor. You know, there's plenty things that you could do. So if you know, uh, write books, you know, if God is telling you to write books, um, you, th th there is something that only you can do that has God given to you. Something only you can do, you know, that God has given to you. What do you have in your hand? So whatever it is, just ask God for further instruction on how to develop it, develop it further. So if you know, if you don't, not sure what it is, not quite sure, start asking God. Say, God, I know I like to do this. So uh, show me exactly what I need to be doing in, in, in that area. And then he'll start revealing things to you. And then next thing you know, you're like, oh, I got it. I got it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing that. So if you go, if you like to do it all at editing, guess what? People writing books every day. You can start editing other people's books. Guess what? You can get paid for doing that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, there's many ways that God wants to bless you. You know, and, that, and there's different avenues that he's stuff that he's already placed on the inside of you. And all you got to do is just come forward and walk out in faith and come forward. He said, my example said, I love to do crafts. I would always make things because I didn't have enough money to buy people stuff. Back then that day, me and my husband wasn't been doing good financially. And I didn't, you know, I would buy a bunch of different products, you know, and I make a bunch of stuff. You know, I buy stuff that I can make a whole bunch of stuff out of it. So, you know, back then I was making the jewelry so I can, I buy the bees and stuff and I would make sets and give these people for sets for like Christmas or give people sets for like their birthdays or do the reeves and give them people reeves and stuff. And then one particular day I was still doing that. I wouldn't really didn't think of it as a business. So I had posted something on Facebook one day and my pastor who she, who, um, uh, Pastor Camilla Williams, who she's a, a, a business coach and who she's coaching me now in business. So she, I had posted the, uh, the picture and she said, Hey, that's nice. That's really nice. That look really good. Are you selling it? And I was like, uh, no. And then she said, why? I was like, I didn't even have a reason why I didn't. I said, well, I just usually buy, make it and sell it. I make it and give it to people. He said, no. She said, no, that is a business. God has given you that gift. That is a business. I said, okay. Mm, okay. So I did not pray and ask God about it. He said, yeah, that, that's a business. You know, that's the gift that I have given you. Th that creativity to come up with all these different things, you know, and put it together. And after you put it together, it looks good. And then when you post it on Facebook, everybody wanting it. Everybody coming to, yeah, yeah, I want one of them. Come to my messenger. Yeah, yeah, I want one of them. I, I need one of them, you know what I'm saying? And so that is a business. So that's what I had to do. So I, you know, when God said to move, to start a business, guess what I did? I moved and I started a business. And now a year later, because it was a year in November, a year later, you know, it's made, it started out small. Seemed like nobody wasn't buying at first. But guess what? I didn't give up. I kept persevering. I kept going forward. And I kept making things, you know, because I have a lot of stuff in my, in my uh, room in there that people didn't buy. But... God said, keep making. So whenever he give me an idea, I start making it. I put it on Facebook and it's like, they was, they be tearing it up. You know what I'm saying? So not only that, he gave me, he told me to go on Etsy. So, you know, I went on Etsy and I, I created a page and, um, and so for the first time that when I tried to go on Etsy, I put trying to put the stuff in there. It seemed like the shipping was out of this world. I was like, Lord, look at him. What in the world wrong with his shipping? Ain't nobody gonna pay that kind of shipping to get nothing. So I wasn't gonna do it. And then later on I came I, it came back to me and said, go ahead and get your uh, Etsy account. So I went, got me an Etsy account. And, and this time, particular time I'm on there, the shipping is not like, it's not. I saw it had to be the enemy trying to deter me from going on Etsy. But anyway, I was on Etsy and um, 
I was thinking about it the other day. I said, well, Lord, I don't know about Ipsy because I'm having a lot of my business on Facebook, so I don't even know if I should keep the Ipsy page. So I mentioned it to my husband. He said, no, you need to keep it. So I miss it, missing it to my business coach. She said, no, just take the time one day a week to go in there and just upload the stuff that you need to go on there and upload. That's okay, God. I said, okay. So I received that, what she said. And so, um... So the other day I said, well, Lord, I, I, he said, well, just take the whole day. So I took, I just took time out the whole day and I went up there, went in there and upload everything new that I got on, on Etsy. So now it's is updated. So, you know, so, and you know, all we got to do is just move and do what God is telling us to do. You know, uh, and the more we do whatever God is telling us to do, the better we get at it. You know, like when I first maybe started making, um, uh, my wood crafts, you know, my custom crafts, maybe they didn't look all that hot. But as the more I kept doing it, the better it kept getting to look. And now it looked just like it came out of the stove. You know, I, you know, that's what many people have told me that it looked just like it come out of the stove. So, you know, so, you know, God has, has, has perfected my craft. I put it like that to the point that it now it looks like it came out of stove. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the more we do what God is telling us to do, the better we are with it. And said, maybe if you're supposed to be starting a business with the COVID-19 and many people are not going places. So, so maybe God had told you to start a business and then maybe, you know, uh, you've been around people, for example, you know, now we have the COVID-19 and God has told you to start a business and maybe, I don't, you know, maybe it's, um, with, with, um, custom items, like he has, has given me with different custom items, you know, and you, maybe you want to do a big, um, uh, open, uh, grand opening or something. And then it fell through. You didn't get the money to be able to do it. Guess what? But you can do that virtually. You know, it don't cost nothing to get on Facebook other than pay your cable bill, your internet bill. You know what I'm saying? You know, go on, go on Facebook, set up your Facebook page, business page, and then should I make you some little flyers? Go on, post, post, post my wall, make you up some flyers and upload them to the Facebook. And then, um, show, let everybody know that you're going to be having a grand opening of your business, online business on such and such a day. And then when it's time, you know, when it's time for your grand opening, do a Facebook live video, you know, get on there with your Facebook live video and let them know, hey, this is the, I, this, I'm so and such, such from whatever business I had name I have, God has given me. Uh, and this is uh, some of my products and begin to describe the products and everything. And next thing you know, people be hitting and hitting and hitting and you begin starting to get sales and then your business start can start progressing. So because I've seen so many people on there selling paparazzi, you know, my, my uh, pastor. Pastor Camilla, she sells paparazzi and several other people sell paparazzi, but it don't matter how many people sell paparazzi because everybody have their own customers, you know what I'm saying? So quit worrying about, you know, even if you're making the same thing I'm making, it don't matter because you're in a different area than I am, you know what I'm saying? It's enough people in this whole world, you know what I'm saying, to be a blessing to each one of us. So don't allow uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the spirit of fear to keep you from moving forward. Don't allow the spirit of anxiety anxiety to keep you moving forward because it doesn't matter if 50 people if you on a block with 50 people and three of those people doing the same thing you doing it doesn't matter if God's hand is on what you're doing it's going to be successful if he got to get some international people from our overseas to be a blessing to your business so I'm just putting this out there. So what do you have in your hand? Cause I'm give I'm taking away all the excuses. Well, God is taking away all the excuses. I'm I'm just saying what He's saying. I'm just all the excuses been taken away. So you know we got this Facebook, we got Instagram, we got Twitter, we got um linked. Um, you can go on there and post stuff. People post videos. I I've done videos on there, posting videos. So you got all these social media outlets. So there's no excuses. You know, most of us have cell phones. Most of us have internet in our home. Most of us have tablets, laptops. So there's no excuses why we're not branching out and moving forward in what God is telling us to do. So it says maybe you need to get creative and do a virtual, like a business launch. Do a virtual business launch. You can't do a. a uh, in person business launch, do a virtual. What I mean, why you can't do a virtual? Ain't you got internet? You on this live today, so you definitely got internet some kind of way. But anyway, you know, and then uh, then later on, maybe uh, down in 2022, you know, later on, once the all this COVID 19 and uh, Delta variant and um, all that other stuff get die down, 
the next thing you know, um, do a, 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 um, a in-person um, virtual, uh, do an in-person um, business launch. You can always do a re-relaunching, re re you know what I'm saying? Be creative. You know, God has given, given us all a creative mind. Use your mind, you know. For something other than worrying, you know, and complaining, you know what I'm saying? But um, but you God has given us the ability to do things, you know. I do my videos on Facebook Live, you know, for uh, my business. Sometimes I do videos for my business, but uh, basically, basically what I do, I just take the pictures after I make it, take a picture, place it on Facebook, and next thing you know, people start responding to what I posted on Facebook. So, you know, if you got a regular page, I'm telling you how to do it. If you got a regular page and you got, and then make you a business page, post stuff on your regular page, which it had, usually has more uh, uh, followers than your business page at this time. But on your business page, make sure you like everybody that you have followed, that follow you on your regular page, send them a like, everybody. Send them a like and let them let them uh, let them like you know you on your your business page. So now everything that you post on your personal page, they they see it, and everything you post on your business page, they see it. And then next next thing you know, their friends may see it, and maybe you know you may you want to do some advertising, may to go ahead and boost one of your posts, one of your things you make, boost it, and you know for however money amount of money you want to boost it for, boost it, and next thing you know, you know people, I cause I. I boosted a lot of posts, uh, pitch different things over the years. Over well, over the year, I said over the years. I, I'm I'm prophesying, y'all. But over the over that year's time, and when I first boosted, I didn't wouldn't get no response. But you know, God showed me something on um, I think the first of the year, first of the month, and I he and I did a wood burning. Um, it says um. It was talking about um, thanking God um, that you being thankful to God. Anyway, I posted that wood burning, and don't you know that? And I boosted it, and I didn't boost it for the amount of uh, of responses that I got. I boosted for uh, for a low amount, you know. I think it was twenty five dollars. I boosted for it, but when it got through with those five days, it had over over seven seventy five hundred uh, responses. To that one post. So you know. I know that was God. You know what I'm saying. So you know. If you do. What God is telling you to do. And you know. Do what I'm telling you to do. And this is God talking. He's talking through me. Do it virtual. Don't worry about in being in person. You know. Especially with products. You know. You know, if you got products like I do, you know, make it. Um, if you're making it, if you're not making it, maybe you you buying it from other people. Get on there if you buy. If you got pocketbooks, get on there. Do videos with your pocketbooks. Uh, uh, you know, whatever you doing it with. If you got selling makeup, eyelashes, get on there with the eyelashes. Uh, lipstick. Um, um lip gloss. Uh. You know, nail polish, whatever. You know, get on there and do videos with that. Just like, you know what I'm saying? Just do videos and then take that video, upload it to YouTube, get your YouTube with your business so you know they can find get all your videos in one place and then um, upload um, that, that video from Facebook, upload it to um to all those other places and next what well, you keep getting you keep uh, generating different got people eyes on your stuff and next thing you know people start coming from those places coming to that maybe that didn't have a fa didn't there wasn't on Facebook that much that come from other places coming to your Facebook so that I'm I'm this this is what God has told me to do. This is what I've done. That's why my, you know, God has picked up my business because I've been obedient. You know, you know, it, we don't, we can't uh, um, be um, what that word is. Uh, we can't um, by small beginnings. We can't feel so so type of way about small beginnings because we got to start somewhere. But you, if we walk out in faith and do what God is telling us to do, God is able to blow on your business within a day. You know, just like the books, if he tell you to write a book, your, your book is, is, is subject to be a bestseller. All God to do, all God got to do is blow his, is is put his hand on it, and the next thing you know, uh, Oprah got it, and they having at their book club. Next thing you know, your book is a bestseller, but you won't know it's a bestseller if you sitting on that book. If you ain't writing that book, if you got it written and then sitting over there on the, on the counter, over the shelf, or on the in the closet, it ain't gonna do no good over in there. You know what? You're gonna have to get it out and do what God is saying. But what God has asked, told me to ask you: What do you have in your hand? So remember, if God had told you to do it, then he will make provision for you to be, be able to do it. So whatever God has told you to do, he'll make provision for you to be able to do it. So, you know, a lot of times we think it should happen one way. But God said, no, he's God limitless. God can, you know, he, he has other ways to do 
to do for us. He has other ways even to speak to us, you know. You know, so uh, I'm going to say this. I'm going to give you this testimony. So, um, you know, um, a couple of weeks ago, I had went to the doctor to get a mammogram. And when I went, um, I and uh, then the doctor called me back. She said, uh, "Miss Richardson, um, there's something on your mammogram in your right breast. So what we need to do is we need to reschedule schedule another mammogram." And that was a week after, after the after that that first the first one. So you know how the enemy does. He comes to us, start talking about cancer and all this and that and all that and and what your mama died of, and what your daddy died of. I said, oh, that's a devil is a lie." I said, "They may have died of certain." another part of a type of cancer but i i, I break I, i'm a i'm a curse a break a bloodline break, curse breaker i ain't gonna die for none of that that don't that don't apply to me and so um and so the lord so the um i went to walmart one day uh we was getting ready to have our christmas party at our church and i went to walmart looking for a christmas shirt and i walked over there this this particular shirt had was red so that's why i walked over there and picked and looked it up picked it up and getting looked at it and when i looked at it it said faith over fear i said mm. i said okay god and so you know i you know i i put this shirt back i said well there ain't no christmas shirt so we got I, we know i never could find one so we got ready to leave um we was riding down the road just as we stopped to the red light uh, we got a, a um visual a, a one of the billboards of digital billboards and just as big as life it came up faith over fear and i said oh okay god talking now he's speaking I said, God telling me that I need to walk in faith regardless of what, what the doctor said or what the, anybody has said I got, or what the test has said. I need to walk in faith. I don't need to come in agreement with the enemy because when you start coming in agreement with the enemy, that's when, it, when that stuff starts uh, manifesting in your body. So I said, uh-uh, I ain't coming in agreement with him. And I began to talk to the Lord, and he was saying, as he said, uh, whenever you um, start hearing his voice, you start, you start going into worship. I said, well, okay, God. I said, well, um, what? I need to be singing me a song. And the song that came to my mind was it, um, um, by Tasha Cobb. He knows my name. And so um, I said, okay. So I, I began every time I could hear the enemy talking, I began to say, he knows my name. And just singing out loud and everything and enjoying myself. And the next thing you know, he'll he leave. He'll come, he kept coming back. And the day of the, the, that Sunday before I was supposed to go, he came back again, start talking all kind of crazy. I said, uh uh, I ain't coming in agree with that. I ain't receiving that. We, I'm fine. There's nothing wrong with me. And I continue to sing that song. So I went there, got up that Monday. Um, which I go, you know, I have prayer every morning. I got up in that in the prayer. I begin to pray in tongues, and I left here on my way to the doctor's, on to the way to the hospital to take this test. I was praying in tongues the whole way. I said, "Mm mm, uh uh, devil, we ain't, I ain't receiving nothing you saying. No, uh uh, I ain't coming to agreement with that. No, uh uh." So we got on, got on there. And I got through uh, the triage, got back there. And I got ready to have the test. And she was saying, now, nah, you know it's going to hurt because I got to do a different kind of way. I said, okay. I was like, well, it's got to be done. I I can, I have to go through it. You know, God had already prayed. I said, God, I know it's going to hurt. So help me. Give me the grace enough to be able to go through it without, you know, you know uh, any issues. So we went back there, did the test. She got through. She said, well, okay, I need you to sit in here uh, before you... Uh, before you leave, because I need to show it to the uh, radiologist so they can read it. I said, okay, cool. And so I stopped back there singing my song, looking at a book, singing it, singing it, singing it away. And then she came back. She said, well, okay, um, we need you to do a sonogram. I said, okay. She said, well, let's go next door. Let's do the sonogram. So I went next door and did a sonogram. And the, and the, and the lady was doing it. She asked me, said, you have been having pain? I said, no. She said, in the distraught. I said, no, I, I'm, I'm cool. I ain't had no issues with it. And so she did a sonogram. And she got through. She said, well, okay, go ahead and put your clothes on. Let's go, let my, uh, let's go sit out in the waiting room. I want you to just sit there for a while to see. Make sure we got all the tests we need and everything. And then so you won't have to come right back to the hospital. I said, okay. So I sat out there saying, continue to sing my song. I said, no, devil, we ain't going. I ain't going there with you. Uh-uh. No, I'm not going to uh, come in agreement with what you're saying. Uh, I, I, I know I'm healed. God said, by his stripes. 
I'm healed. So he wouldn't never keep showing me that, that, that word faith over fear. You know, if something was going to happen, I said, no, uh, -uh I'm, I'm cool. So they came out and told me, said, you can go ahead and leave. So I came home, went on ahead and got back in my work, start doing, making stuff like I, you know, like I normally do. And then I got a phone call from the doctor's office and say, everything was fine. It, they, everything was benign. There's nothing wrong with me. And I said, I, I began to praise the Lord over the phone with the nurse, you know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? So I, I said that all to say is that, you know, God is with us. He's for us. I mean, if he's told you to do something that, you know, he, he's going to see, he's going to make it come to pass. You know, all you got to do is believe, walk out in faith, you know, you know, and just not receive what the enemy is saying, you know, uh, not, that nobody's going to buy your products. Uh, he don't, I mean, he just saying that because he don't want you to make it. You know what I'm saying? He just wants you to, you want you to still be, you know, in that corner in the cave and not doing anything but god wants us to get out the cave you know you can use your your business as a ministry mine is a ministry you know uh with the, the items that i make because he gives me the drink ideas to make them so it's a ministry you know and your business can be a ministry as well because not only do i make things and, and people buy them but i get chance to talk to them i get chance chance to minister to them and that's the part he was trying to stop you know and that's the part he's trying to stop in you to keep you from oh he wants to keep your mouth shut so people won't be healed and delivered and set free because of things God has delivered and set you free from so that's you know so that's the, the job of the enemy to still kill and destroy he wants to kill your dream but God wants you to want your dream to come to pass but the only way your dream is going to come to pass is you step out in faith and do what God is telling you to do I have gave you plenty of opportunities plenty of suggestions you know uh uh Plenty of ideas of creativity, the way you can still do that business. And, you know, and um, nothing has to stop. Nothing has to stop. Just because you can't be in person don't mean you can't do your business. You can do it online because Facebook is free. Only thing you got to pay for is the ads, you know, and you just pay for however much you can afford, you know, at the time and let God do the rest. Um, so um, that's all I was going to say, you know, but God wanted me to ask you, what do you have in your hand? So, um, so I can say only, only person that knows what you got in your hand is you and God. And so if, I'm just, God just want to give you the opportunity to use what you have in your hand. Don't go into 2022, still sitting down on God, still sitting on down on something God has told you to do. You need to get fast in a hurry. You know, let January the 1st be the, be the first day that you do what God has said. You know, you don't even got to wait till January the 1st. You know, we got another day in this month. Uh, tomorrow you can start on your mark on tomorrow you already got he already gave you a business write your business plan make the vision make it plain uh that's what he said uh uh you know and start running with it you know and and, and just you know uh you like to say if you're selling different products there's no excuses all these facebook lives you could be doing you know go on instagram do facebook do lives you know what i'm saying uh go on i don't know if you can do it on twitter but anyway go on these opportunities go on youtube do lives you know what i'm saying and then send people the link you know there's plenty of things that you could be doing you know i mean this it's just time out for sitting down on god you know and sitting down on your blessing because you you you're you're actually sitting down on the blessing god wants to give to you so it's time so it's time to move and do what God is telling you to do. Like I said, there's no more excuses. So I just gave you some avenues that God has told me to use. And it's been a blessing to me. Uh, just for the ESC concern, you know, I, I've had sales on ESC. I think I have two, but that's two better than none. You know what I'm saying? So the more you work your business, the, uh, the better you get. And if you ever need uh, a business coach, you know, uh, my pastor, uh, Cam uh, Camilla, Spikes Williams, she does business coaching. She's coaching me now. I'm in the class now. She's coaching me and she's giving me great ideas, you know, uh, about doing things to be, um, so our business can grow, you know, and especially once we give them back to God and told God he can do whatever he want to do with our business. He don't mind helping you be, be successful in your business. So, uh, you, you want to get with her, contact her on Facebook, go to her messenger, contact her, you know, maybe you can get in the next class. Cause like I said, it really has been a blessing to me, and I, I've seen myself grow in a lot of areas. So, um, but um, that's all I wanted to say today, and I pray that some y'all has gotten something out of the lesson. But I, the main question I'm asking you again: What do you have on in your hand? 
It may be finances. Maybe it not, you know, maybe you you ain't good at making nothing. Maybe you God has blessed you with finances, that you abundantly blessed with the finances. Then if God has blessed you with finances, then he wants you to bless, be a blessing somebody else. Ministry, maybe they business. Maybe somebody down the road from you needs something. You know, you know, inquire. You know, you don't never know. You know, if God has put somebody on your heart to be a blessing to them, don't sit back and hold it. Go ahead and bless them because the only way he can give seed to the soil is we have to release the seed to get a, to get a harvest. That's the only way you're going to get it is release it to get a harvest. It's always going to be seed time and harvest time. So if we sow that seed, the harvest is coming back. And just like with me, I'm going to say this and I'm really going to get off when um. Uh, during the Christmas holidays, certain people needed things, and God was touching my heart to bless them. I didn't question it. I, when I heard the voice of the Lord, I went on ahead and did it. And then my pastor was on there saying several, several people needed stuff. So I didn't. Hes- I don't hesitate, you know, because you know God has given me the, uh, the ability to be able to give. You know, He gave up, gave us extra to be able to give. So I give, and then and when I, the more I was giving, the more business was coming in. When I was giving, next thing you know, people were steady wanting stuff. You know what I'm saying? So he's going to give it back to you. And he gave it back to me fast, quick in a hurry. So he said, you know, he will uh, give seed to the soil. He said he will cause men to give unto your bosom. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your business, bosoms. But you got to release the seed first. Well, I love y'all. I, I pray this, like to say, I love y'all. pray that some of y'all has gotten some out of the lesson. And I'll see y'all next week. God bless you.